Now this deck has piqued my interest since its release in the TCG, but ever since Rota came out and gave it some new support, I think this deck is legit. And the deck of course that I'm talking about is Mimogul's. There's different ways to play the deck, but in today's build, I want to show you guys how to play Mimogul with a bunch of different supplementary engines. So it's not like a Mimogul pile deck, but it kind of is. And I really, really like this deck. I think it could be really good in today's format. So I'm going to be showing you guys my Mimogul deck profile for the October 2024 format. Now again, this is not a pure build, but if you guys want to see a pure build, let me know in the comment section down below. And also, I'm gonna be showcasing some combos, not in today's video, but tomorrow's video, where I'm gonna show you all the combos that you need to know to play Mimogul at a competitive level. So with that being said, let's get into today's deck profile and show you why Mimogul can compete in today's format. Let's go. So of course, let's get started off here with the main deck. But I do want to say before we start this video is we are playing 50 cards in the main deck and it's not pure Mimigul. You could probably play 40 in a pure build, but this is a 50 card build that I think is very, very powerful. I'm going to explain my card choices when I get to them. But let's start with the Mimigul monsters, of course. So we are only playing one master. You don't need to be playing more than one. You have access to this now super, super easily with your extra deck. So one master three dragon two archfiend and one cerberus these are the old mimigul monsters the reason we're playing this ratio over here even though archfiend is actually better than cerberus i like having different names and that's why we're playing the one cerberus and two archfiend dragon of course is the best normal summon of your deck so that's why i really like playing uh three dragon because this is one of the better ones but then otherwise we are playing two and one i'm not going to explain these cards too much because they are the older cards but i'm going to explain the newer ones so we're playing three fairy and one slime and that's it for the mimigul monsters and these are the new ones over here so one three fairy and one slime fairy is absolutely insane this card is an extender for you so a brand new mimigul extender is absolutely insane it summons itself to your side of the field which is really nice and then slime of course is really good as well because if you give this to your opponent you flip it then i get to summon a mimigul monster because all these cards read when they're flip summoned they do something to your opponent then the control of this card is switched to your opponent so let's say i put this card on my opponent's side of the field i flip it then what ends up happening is i get to summon a mimigul then it comes back to my side of the field and all of these monsters have a similar effect they all do different things so in like Cerberus's case it banishes cards in Dragon's case it destroys all monsters you control Archfiend has a really cool effect as well when you flip it your opponent draws a card but in this case I would be the opponent so I would draw a card and then they have to discard a card so Archfiend is really good in that sense as well and we are playing all of these Mimigul monsters because they're just the best ones we're playing these are the best ratios in my opinion you don't want to play more than one Cerberus honestly sometimes I wouldn't like to play any Cerberus at all but I think having the extra name is really important when you run out of names through your combos so that's why we're playing one Archfiend and one slime and ultimately these cards are all bricks and that's part of the reason why we are playing 50 cards instead of 40 cards because you don't really want to draw a lot of these names unfortunately you want to be getting these out of your deck with your maker with your dungeon etc etc dragon is the only good one really to draw otherwise you don't really want to draw any of these and that's why we're playing 50 like i said because you'd rather not even see these names but we are playing of course three mimical dungeon and one terraforming along with three maker and three rooms so these cards are absolutely insane for your consistency as well maker is a one card combo now which is because of your extra deck like this is insane that it's a one card combo and then if you open maker with unicorn oh my god bro you're ripping two every single time you're at least ripping two from the extra deck one on your turn and then you are going to be able to do it on your opponent's turn as well so being able to rip two with just maker and unicorn is crazy and then dungeon of course is really good for the stun effect where if my opponent controls a face down monster they can't normal summon which is good and then mimigul room is also really good as well being able to special summon a mimigul monster from my hand or deck to my side of the field or face down to my opponent's side of the field which means i can uh, either use this to put something face down trigger that effect and then get my unicorn or get any of my like thrusts or whatever off or if I just need an extender, this can act as an extender for me as well, right? So that is it for the Mimigul names over here. I'm maxing out on the important cards, and then uh, you're really not maxing out on, on some of the names. You don't want to draw a lot of these names. Now to show you guys all of the mini engines that we're playing in this deck that just make the ceiling of this deck absolutely insane. So we're playing one Wraith Soth. You really search this off terraforming if you already have access to dungeons. So one Wraith Soth, three Unicorn, one Fenrir, and one Birth. Unicorn is the best one to search here in any situation. If you open it, like it's the best one. Better than opening Fenrir. Fenrir is not great to open unless you specifically open birth, I guess. But otherwise, uh, Unicorn is actually much better because in this format specifically, ripping cards from your opponent extra deck is, is absolutely insane. And you can always trigger this on your turn, at least there. And then on your opponent's turn, you can trigger it again. So you're getting two rips, which is crazy. Imagine again, this format, you're able to rip something like a uh, Fiendsmith sequence and then like a, you know, just a, a Promethean princess. Like that's insane. That's absolutely insane. And that's turn zero pretty much, or turn one, I should say, right? So one Fenrir, one birth. Birth is, you don't need to play Theosis. Theosis is not that good. 
just play birth birth is really good because you can then use your unicorn so part of your combo if you go unicorn you can actually rip your opponent's uh, extra deck and then you can use this to link it away and then you can birth it back right so unicorn is really good because it sets up a lot of different things for you it sets up the link plays it sets up the extra deck rip so three unicorn and one Fenrir. that is the cash package and then we are playing a 10 by package three kaiman as well as one genroku now this is actually a really cool package because it acts as an extender for you so if you open kaiman you activate kaiman you search genroku you summon genroku to your side of the field and it lets you do one of two things one it helps you get to your hieratic seals a lot faster because this is a dragon and then of course your mimigul dragon is a dragon so you get into hieratic seals which is a really good end piece for your first turn combos but another thing this does is it becomes a tuner and it becoming a tuner in junction with all of your level one monsters means you have access to herald of the arc light and herald of the arc light is an absolutely insane card in today's format any monster that would be sent from the hand or deck to the grave is banished instead so that's really really good so this is a really good floodgate for you and you can access it with your genroku as well and you can make it a lot of the times on your end board so your end boards are usually ending on like three four five disruptions just because of all these supplementary engines over here and then uh azurne of course you're playing silhouette rabbit so this is going to help you get into that so these are all your supplementary engines over here we have a lot of consistency that we're playing otherwise but these two engines i really really like playing or three engines if you count this i really really like playing in this deck the other thing i wanted to mention that i'm not playing is uh, magician souls i know some people like to play magician souls so what i see is if you play magician souls you don't play the this package you can play two soul two illusion and that's something else you guys can do because soul is a level one extender for you the only reason i didn't like that engine is because i feel like illusion does nothing for you it's kind of a brick this kind of actually helps you get to another disruption on your side of the field whereas souls is like okay a level one you know extender is cool but you also have fairy now so you don't need it so i think this is just a lot better so moving on to the rest of the deck it's it's pretty easy to explain one for one of course all of your monsters level one absolutely insane card one prosperity of course it's at one but you want to see it for consistency we're playing two talents we're not playing three i don't like playing three talents i think two talents is perfectly fine or well, if you see it you see it if you don't it's all good you're not really going to resolve this or you obviously can resolve it when this deck really easily but it doesn't matter if you're not really, really ripping your, your opponent's cards from their hand I, I don't know it's a good card listen it's a good card i'm not really gonna explain this too much i think two is perfectly fine because i'm playing this package so i'm playing called by three cross out and a lot of hand traps so the hand traps that i'm playing are three imperm just because it's the best generic hand trap two ash two droll and two nib the thing is this deck folds to all of these hand traps like it absolutely just folds to all of these and i really don't want to be playing a deck where i'm going to just auto lose if my opponent drolls me or i'm going to auto lose if my opponent imperms my uh, giant mimigul or, or the imperm my mimigul throne like i don't want to auto lose to that so i'm playing the cross out package you could, in theory, cut the designator, play a third tactics, but that's why I'm playing two tactics because I like playing these. And at the end of the day, you're also playing the hand traps. So not only does this protect you from the hand traps, it also is like, hey, I also open the bureau and I'm going second. I'm just going to nib my opponent or I open droll. I'm just going to draw my opponent. It becomes really, really good in that sense as well. So I really, really like these cards. I think these cards are really important. You could cross out designator stuff like impulse. Like I, I if you want to cut one of these cards for an impulse or cut one of these cards for a furos furos is actually a really good card to cross out designator unfortunately i don't have one so maybe in theory you can play one nib one furos just so you have a cross out target here as well or you guys can play that in the side deck as well personally i just don't have it but yeah impulse and furos are also good cross out targets but you just absolutely fold to these cards which is why i'm playing them so i know we went through a lot for the main deck but uh the extra deck is going to be a lot more simplistic two giant mimigul one mimigul throne this is all you're going to need uh usually i was actually just playing one or one for the longest time i just decided to play the second giant giant's actually a pretty good card here as well so two giant and then one throne throne is going to be able to access a lot of your combos one of the kikingashi fucho this is kind of just a stall card if you need it to be it's not a card you make very often but when you do it can be very clutch one assemble nightingale one downard and one zeus so essentially you can go to assemble nightingale attack directly make downard make zeus and then this way at least you have some backup for whenever you don't open the best hands or if you're going second right so this is a really really good package and then we are playing link monsters one anima of course all your monsters level one one silhouette rabbit this card's really good as well one hieratic seals ip sp haggard lizardos so this card you don't make very often but i actually think it's a very good card the reason you make this sometimes is if you need to get it off your side of the field to summon a kashtira unicorn so say you have two monsters you can make this banish it draw a card and then you have no cards on your field or no monsters on your field so then this way you can make unicorn right so it, it's really nice because then you can summon unicorn and start a lot of your combos again so this card is really good it doesn't happen too often but when it does it's really good one access code talker and then one herald of the the arc light i kind of explained a lot of why you're playing these like hieratic seal and herald of the arc light are really easy to make with the again roku package sp is always going to be a great card these cards are really i mean do you really need to explain a lot of these cards i don't really think so these are just really really good cards and i really like this extra deck 
Moving on to the side deck over here. I actually really like the side deck, but I will say always use your discretion when building a side deck. Use this as a skeleton. This is not the be all end all of side decks. I just really, really like this side deck. But uh, all of my deck profiles, I always say this. Play what you guys want to play. Play what you prefer. Play what makes you feel comfortable because at the end of the day, if you're playing what makes you feel comfortable, you're going to perform better. Also, just to know, if you guys know your locals is a bunch of combo players, side for combo. If you know it's a bunch of back row, side for back row. So with that being said, we're playing three Phantasmin. I think Phantasmin is an insane card in today's format. It's also a dragon for you, which means you can make Kyretic Seal off of this if you need to. But Phantasmin is absolutely insane. Gets you the extra draws is really nice. Being able to draw the hand traps or in a lot of cases, what you're going to be wanting to draw is the board breakers. So we're playing two thrusts over here. Thrust is really good for going first and for going second. I'll show that you guys for the rest of the side deck why that's so good. Going first as well, though, is really good because you can also set your Mimigul room, which means you're going to be able to have at least something to back you up there. But uh, thrust is really good going second because we're playing one Harpies, one Lightning Storm, two Dark Ruler No More, and three Evenly Matched. So all of these cards here are sided in going second all of the time because you are playing a 50 card uh, main deck, right? So you have a lot of cards that you guys can side out. Going second, I'm always going to side out the statue. I'm always going to side out the Genroku package. You could also side out, uh, I mean, you're all, you're never going to side out your hand traps, but you're going to side out the cross out package. So you're going to side out the three cross out on the called by going second. So you're always going to put these cards in because um, you don't care if you OTK your opponent. If you're not OTKing your opponent, but you can break their boards, a lot of the time you're going to win the game anyway. So that's why I'm playing evenly. And uh, like these cards over here are really good against back row. This of course is good against front row. Evenly is also good against front row, depending on the matchup as well. So these cards always coming and going second. They're absolutely insane. And then for going first, we're playing 2D Barrier as well as one different dimension ground. You guys might notice I'm not playing Shifter. The reason I'm not playing Shifter is because I feel like this deck, uh, although it's good, like it's a good Shifter deck, it's um, not that good when you're playing 50 cards. In the pure builds, I 100% recommend playing Shifter. I'm not playing Shifter in the main deck for this one because it's 50 cards, so it's a lot less likely you're going to draw it. But what you can do is you can thrust for different dimension ground, right? Which is really good going first and the barrier here as well. So I really like this side deck. You don't have to play a one for one, but I think it's a really, really powerful side deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Nimogul for the October 2024 format. I hope my card choices made sense. I'm playing 50 cards because like I said, you don't want to see the names. They're kind of like the worst cards to see, but the best cards to see when you get them on field. And then the crossout package, I feel like is very important to protect all your monsters and ensure that your combos go through. I think this deck is legit in today's format. And if you guys want to see the combos, that's going to be tomorrow's video. So all you got to do is like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh videos just like this one. Like I said, the combo videos are tomorrow but then i do product openings more deck profiles all that good stuff right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace